All right, lovely viewers, I need to tell you about something real special, Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service that makes incredible home-cooked meals accessible to anyone, even us here at Death Battle Labs. Sign up now at blueapron.com slash desk and get your first three meals free with free shipping. Like the sweet and sour salmon with bok choy. Just remember that's blueapron.com slash D-E-S-K. Now let's start the show. Okay, people, I'm sure you all know about the Power Rangers and their many variations, and I'm sure a lot of you know the whole thing is essentially based on a Japanese TV show called Super Sentai. Sentai being the Japanese word for fighting squadron or task force, and Super being, well, Super, like me. I'm Jocelyn the Intern, I do all the research nobody else wants to, straight from the desk of Death Battle. During research for the latest death battle, I obviously spent quite a bit of time researching this mighty Morphin mob. And let me tell you, they're more than meets the eye. Now, Power Rangers might be a bit of a silly show, but its production is absolutely fascinating. Super Sentai was far from new when Power Rangers hit TV screens in the United States. In fact, Super Sentai's first series aired in 1975, 18 years before Power Rangers. That's not for a lack of trying, though. A man named Haim Saban saw the success of Sentai in Japan and wanted to bring it to America. He shopped his idea around network after network for seven years before finally catching the attention of Fox. However, they felt that the show would need some changes if it was going to appeal to an American audience. I guess they didn't think kids would relate to the team fighting Crocodile Hitler. So the plan was to keep the action scenes but reshoot the story with an American cast. That meant they needed an American plot that somehow gave these kids an excuse to dress in spandex and fight giant monsters with their dinosaur robots. One of the larger changes would be Zordon. As you probably know in Power Rangers, he's an alien trapped in a time warp. However, Zordon isn't even in Super Sentai at all. Instead, we have Barza, the ancient wizard who helps guide the Super Sentai through their journey, and moonlights as an apartment maintenance guy. The next big difference involves the rangers themselves. Instead of five overbearing and over-emotional humans, the Super Sentai were ancient warriors who had been in stasis for millions of years. But that's just for the original five. The Green Ranger's story is even crazier. In Super Sentai, the Green Ranger is a gnome prince entirely driven by revenge and is determined to kill his brother, the Red Ranger. But here's the catch. By the time he unlocks the ability to transform into the Green Ranger, his brother had already entered stasis. This forced him to make his own stasis chamber, and that did not work out so well because, uh, his ass died. Luckily, he gets visited by a god that looks way too much like a clan member. Anyway, this racist reviver brings the Green Ranger back to life and gives him his Zord, but with a catch. He's also given a secret cave with a candle. When that candle burns away, so does his life. However, the candle only burns when he leaves the cave. This is why the Green Ranger rarely comes out to fight in Power Rangers and why so much of the Green Ranger's footage is reused. The candle was still featured in the American show, of course, but as a method for Rita to steal the Green Ranger's powers. There's obviously plenty of differences because they were essentially two completely different stories. But you know, I gotta respect Power Rangers. Somehow they managed to create a hit TV series and iconic American franchise all while having to write around existing Japanese footage. Bonus fact, I think it's fair to say everyone was happy to see Brian Cranston as Zordon in the movie reboot. But did you know he was in the original Power Rangers as well? Yep, he was fighting for the bad guys back then, most notably as Snizzard. I think it's safe to say he's come a long way. 